The mission is critical. The airspace is complex. The margins are thin. Public aircraft fly to protect life, property, and security. But across firefighting, law enforcement, and wildlife control, one factor continues to take lives, loss of control in flight. From 2014 to 2023, loss of control in flight, or simply LOCI, was the leading cause of fatal public aircraft accidents in the United States. It accounted for over 80% of all fatal local government operations and nearly half of all public aviation fatalities. These aren't mechanical failures. They're breakdowns in energy state awareness, control coordination, and decision making, often in daylight, good weather, and familiar missions. According to ICAO Doc 111, Manual on Aeroplane Upset Prevention and Recovery Training, experience alone is no guarantee of resilience in the face of an upset. Let's look at three fatal LOCI events in public operations and consider what could have changed the outcome. First, on June 5, 2015, a USDA Wildlife Services aircraft was performing predator control near Raton, New Mexico. After a low-level pass, the pilot initiated a tight turning climb. GPS data showed a drop to 55 miles per hour, well below stall speed for the bank angle. The aircraft exceeded its critical angle of attack and entered an unrecoverable stall. As stated in the NTSB final report, the pilot's failure to maintain adequate airspeed while maneuvering at low altitude resulted in the airplane exceeding its critical angle of attack. This was a routine mission with an experienced pilot in familiar terrain. Repeated low altitude maneuvering under pressure or increasing load increased indicated stall speed with little to no margin left no room for error. The absence of practical recovery reflexes and a less than ideal understanding of load's influence on envelope safety margins under realistic conditions are what make loss of control in flight fatal. Prevention isn't enough. Training must build instinctive, disciplined control behaviors at the edge of the envelope. Next, a flight design CTLS operated by a sheriff's department was conducting low-level observation patrol. The aircraft was maneuvering at about 500 feet AGL when the pilot reacted abruptly to sun glare and rising terrain. The aircraft entered a sharp bank and stalled. The NTSB concluded the pilot's exceedance of the airplane's critical angle of attack during a low-altitude turn resulted in an aerodynamic stall spin. Additional factors included 152 pounds over gross weight and mission pressure to remain in visual contact with the terrain. Startle surprise and mission urgency can easily degrade cognitive bandwidth. Without prior exposure to realistic upset conditions, pilots may over-control or freeze, both possibly fatal at low altitude. Finally, on October 29, 2014, a contractor-operated Hawker Hunter MK-58 supporting U.S. Navy operations crashed on approach near Oxnard, California. Returning from a routine defense support mission, the pilot entered a descending overhead break and banked 45 degrees at just 276 feet AGL. The aircraft slowed to 114 knots well below the required energy state. It stalled and spun in. According to the final report, the pilot's failure to maintain adequate airspeed during the approach resulted in an aerodynamic stall spin at an altitude too low for recovery. This was a highly experienced military pilot, but the low time and type, just 15 hours, and unrecognized energy depletion created a fatal trap. Even experienced pilots may revert to familiar patterns under stress. If energy state recognition and recovery are not trained under pressure, they may not be executed when it counts. Each of these accidents occurred during public missions, flying with purpose, not negligence. But loss of control in flight doesn't discriminate by aircraft type, pilot background, or mission. Guidance from ICAO Doc 111, FAA Advisory Circulars 12111 and 109A reinforce clear direction. Upset prevention and recovery training must be integrated, realistic, and behaviorally anchored. The Every Pilot in Control Solution Standard, or simply EPIC S2, brings that to life. First, educate pilots on aerodynamic margins to include the influence of load on angle of attack and its association with the edge of the envelope related to stalls. Second, practice recovery techniques under conditions of startle and time pressure. Third, ingrain decision-making habits under cognitive load and ambiguity. As we've mentioned before, and as Archilochus mentioned over a millennia ago, you don't rise to the occasion, you fall to the level of your training. None of these crews had a second chance. The moment to act came and went, faster than their level of recognition could catch up. 
Public Safety Aviation demands precision, resilience, and control under pressure. And those capabilities don't come from time in the air alone. They come from structured, integrated training. UPRT strengthens readiness by the following. Embedding energy state awareness into pilot reflexes. Rehearsing recoveries in conditions that replicate real-life pressure. And equipping pilots with disciplined responses to sudden, unexpected upsets. True resilience in flight is forged well before takeoff, shaped through deliberate training that mirrors the demands of the mission and prepares the mind as much as the hands. Airborne public safety pilots have committed to a mission that matters. Now commit to mastering the skills that maximally protect that mission, including you and all of those who fly with you or in close proximity to you on your noble purpose. You got this.